In today's world, we're very involved in social media, and sometimes we don't know, but the excessive use of these platforms can affect us in many ways. Teens are one of the groups that mostly are affected, and that's why Half the Story Project was first created, with the objective to create digital well-being as a fundamental human right. To talk more about this nonprofit is digital wellness activist and founder of Half the Story, Larissa May. Larissa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for hosting me. Yes, a Bay Area native. It is awesome to have you here on the show. And you're really, your reach is global, truly, what you're doing with Half the Story. But for our viewers who have maybe never heard of the nonprofit, tell us a little bit about it. Absolutely. Well, Half the Story, I actually started it now almost eight years ago because I almost ended my own life due to mm. my very toxic relationship with technology. And I realized that we talk so much about sexual wellness, physical wellness, nutritional wellness, mm -hmm. but if the average young person will spend 30 years of their life behind a screen, why are we not talking about digital wellness? So eight years ago, I set off on a mission to build the first youth-led organization to empower the next generation's relationship with technology through education, through policy and research. Oh my goodness, amazing. And I love that you are doing this. Like you said, the first youth-led nonprofit that is doing big things like this. So in what ways are you helping the youth in this next generation to bridge that gap? So right now, everyone asks, how do you solve this problem? Mm -hmm. And in many ways, I've been fighting and carrying the torch for this work for the last eight years, and I do feel like today is almost day one. Mm -hmm. We take a top-down and bottoms-up approach. From a bottoms-up perspective, we focus on education, digital well-being education in middle school and high school mm -hmm. to help kids cultivate the skills that they need to emotionally thrive in the digital age, mm -hmm. something that we measure called digital flourishing. Mm -hmm. So this is called Social Media U. It's a quarter-long program. We serve a lot of students in the Bay Area, and it helps gives them that empowerment and knowledge so that they feel like they're in control of tech rather than tech being in control of them. Amazing. And then on the policy side, tops yeah. down, we take these kids that go through our programming. We're actually launching a civics academy next summer so that we can prepare kids and bring them to the Capitol to share their own voices with mm -hmm. politicians and to help shape the policies that are being designed. Because so often there's a disconnect between the reality that the most marginalized communities are facing and the policies that are designed. So we want to ensure that there's a young voice in every room where there's a decision being made about them. And you work with all of these young voices hand in hand, Larissa, and when you work with them, what are some of the things that they say about the dangers of social media or how it's affecting them personally? <sighs> wow, well, we hear all sides of the story, no pun mm -hmm. intended. Yeah. Uh, on the negative side, I think a lot of adults or a lot of the media only talks about what young women are facing, mm -hmm. the body image issues, which social media and media as a whole has cultivated for many, many years. But what we also hear from a lot of our young men is that they struggle as well with body image and that there's also a lot of issues with gaming platforms like Roblox and Discord. Mm -hmm. And these social platforms are not just a part of their life. They are the lifeline to their reality. But then on the flip side, we also hear from kids that don't have safe homes that social media is their window to community. Wow. They really find a lot of joy in being able to express, to create, and to cultivate community that they might not have in the real world. So we're really faced with this paradigm that there are two sides that we have to acknowledge, and we're also very much so at the beginning of really understanding what the social, emotional, cognitive, and even biological toll is that these platforms have on our youth. Oh my goodness, yeah, and, and you can really tell that it is having a large effect on our youth. And you mentioned both sides, the positive and the negative, so maybe what in what ways can people solve these problems with the negativity? I know that's a very broad answer yeah. and very deep, but any ideas or tips out there for people listening? Absolutely. Digital well-being is a journey. It mm -hmm. takes small steps every day, just as if you wanted to run a marathon or if you needed to lose weight. And so for technology, what we always say, if you're a parent watching this right now, first, you have to get real with your own habits. If you are not modeling a positive relationship with your child and technology, they're not gonna have a very healthy one either. The second thing that we would say is really create strong boundaries. So if you have young kids from the age of three to five years old, maybe they don't have a phone, but show them every night you putting your phone to bed before you're putting them to bed so that mm. they can start to see and recognize that that is normal to unplug before you go to bed. Yes. Uh, and also make screen-free spaces for your family to cultivate, to engage, whether that be meals and otherwise, and make it fun. This doesn't have to always be serious. Yeah. Try right? to see how long you can go 
go without a phone, gamify it. Sit down with your kids and do a deep fake competition where you're trying to guess what's a deep fake, what's reality to educate them, but also let's be real, for adults to educate yourself because yes. sometimes our kids know a lot more than we do. That's so true, especially when it comes to technology oh, in geez. today's day and age. Yes, <laughs> and I watch these kids like whizzes. You know, I think yeah. I'm fast, I think I know how to use AI in my email. Oh no, these kids are faster than any other generation that we've seen. Oh my goodness. So what other things is Half the Story doing currently yeah. to help bridge this gap and helping the youth? Yeah, so one of the biggest things outside of our educational programming is that we work with our youth on an iterative design process. So what that means is every single week we're meeting with a group of teen advisors and they're helping us really understand one, what are the biggest challenges that young people are facing online? Two, what are the most toxic features or trends that are happening? And three, what we can do with that information is share it with social platforms and share it with policymakers. So right now what we're doing is trying to take our digital flourishing research, the research that we get in working with under-resourced communities, and then actively using that to inform the 2024 California policy mm -hmm. uh, strategy that we're working on with a number of other orgs in the state. And it, I really see it as California's responsibility to lead the charge here, yeah. <laughs> also because Silicon Valley is only miles away. But our young people have so much to say about the digital world. And what we know right now is that tech was not designed to support their emotional well-being. Mm. It's really pruning them of their ability to socialize. And we need kids at the center of not only policies that hold tech accountable, but also at the center of designing tech to support emotional flourishing. And I think in, in also San Francisco, a lot of what I've been talking about lately with tech companies is trying to get them to think about how do we measure digital flourishing? How do we optimize for KPIs that support the well-being of our community? Mm -hmm. as opposed to just be on the offense or the defense. Yes. And our kids are here. You know, they always want to share their ideas. And I think it's time for us to all make concessions because tech's not going anywhere. Abstinence yeah. isn't going to work. Much like the environmental crisis, tech companies or every single business, we have to take financial cuts for the sake of humanity. Absolutely. So really quickly, before I let you go, Larissa, how can people get involved if they do want to get involved? Yes. If you want to bring social media you to your school, go to halfthestoryproject.org. If you want to join us as a teen advisor, your kids can sign up online there too. They're all paid opportunities and it's great for professional development and college applications. Awesome. Thank you so much, Larissa. We appreciate you. Thank you.